computer art tutorial we're getting into is some cool stuff here with making gif animations or gif animations from uh, using the timeline feature in Photoshop so what we're going to be doing is taking a galaxy and uh, if I go ahead and hit play here you can see this animation roll we're going to take some galaxies and put them into any object or space in a picture that's round essentially so you can do this with anything from sunglasses to soup bowls to sink drains to center of flowers or snow globes or anything really um, so this particular example I had put them in the middle of the sunglasses that I looked up here and another example I have going on in here is a couple of coffee cups so again um, a couple simple techniques using some masks and layers this is just taking a second to render I believe and then it'll kinda get into its flow but um, what we want to do to start is find an image that has something round that we can put a galaxy inside of essentially so um, again there's all kinds of possibilities of things that you could do this with um, you doesn't necessarily have to have two spaces to put galaxies either it could just be just one single cup or something along those lines too so <clears throat> this is funny I think this particular one I have at a higher resolution so it's just taking a second before it gets all through and then I'm sure it's gonna run smoothly after this so you can see this kind of running at a better speed um, it, it looks better once we export it anyways um, but to get started with this we're gonna have to find an image I'm gonna walk you through how I did this example here so in order to start I just kinda did a Google search for a model with round sunglasses found a good image that I liked here and went ahead right clicked and gone to copy image go to Photoshop I'm gonna go file new and my clipboard should recognize that I copied an image so I don't need to adjust the size I should just go ahead with what the size is here and then hit command V to paste in this picture now I'm gonna do a little cropping so that we kind of focus in on the sunglasses which is kind of the main part of the picture we're trying to focus on oops <clears throat> and that seems good hit enter to keep my cropping and now what I'm going to need to do is start off by I'm going to duplicate this layer so I'm going to right click and go down to duplicate layer say okay you can also hit command J and then the next thing I'm going to need to do is add in my spiral galaxies. So I'm going to go back to my Chrome here, and I already have a search going of spiral galaxy, which is what we want to look up here and find any image that has kind of a spiral looking galaxy. And let's see, try not to take one that's protected with stamps or anything like that. This one will work fine. I'm going to go to copy image. Go ahead back in Photoshop here and then hit Command V to paste. So as you can see this image is a little bit larger than I needed it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down so that it's just a little bit bigger than the space I need it to fit, which is one of those sunglasses. So once I get that I'm going to hit return and keep that transformation. Now let's zoom in a little bit here actually maybe what I'll do is I'm gonna start on this side so again this process you only need to follow really on one particular object again if you want to put it on multiples like I'm doing you can do that as well but I'm going to use my circular marquee tool here and I'm going to hold shift and click and drag to make a good circle um, make sure that's maybe look like it started a little bit outside the edge there so I just came a little bit short I'm gonna nudge this into place with my arrow keys just down and over into the right spot. So now what I want to do is with this layer one copy selected, I want to hit my mask button here, add layer mask. So adding that will create a layer mask that goes around that space. And then actually what we're going to do is just go ahead and right click on here and go to apply layer mask so that all we should see is kind of that little circle there. Now what I can do is take this galaxy, I want to actually move it right over that particular sunglass there, and I kind of want it to be, make sure that the galaxy part is in the center there, and then I'm going to do a clipping mask on this. So I'm going to go down to create clipping mask, so right click on that galaxy layer, 
and then go to create clip and mask and that makes that fit right inside that little circle there that we that we put there before. Um, the other thing we're going to want to do is in order to make this move and spin we need to make this a smart object so I'm going to right click on this layer as well and we'll go to convert to smart object okay and you see the little icon pop up in the lower right hand corner there so that is all I need as far as layers go to get going here. Now, I may, uh, I'll go ahead and set up the other side as well. So if you're only doing one image, you only need to do that many, and then we'll go into the timeline here. But I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer and set this up one more time. So maybe if you missed it, you can see what to do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my circular selection area there, holding shift, clicking and dragging with my mouse move that into the right place. When you're selecting, make sure that your feather is at zero. Um, unless you want a faded edge, then you could uh, add a little bit uh, of feather to it, maybe make a 10 or 20 feather there uh, to get a faded edge on your selection here. Um, so this layer now is the one that I want to mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the mask button and then right click on it and apply the layer mask. Um, what I could just do also is um, take this smart object actually um, I could just or what I'm gonna do is just hit command V and paste in this galaxy again I am going to then shrink this down to get it to be the size that I need holding shift and clicking and dragging is gonna keep the proportions of my galaxy good and get it about the size that fits over this glass here. Okay, and then hitting enter will keep my transformation. And then um, I need to organize a little bit here. So this is going to go up here, and then I'm gonna right click and create a clipping mask again. Okay, so then that is now adjusted to this layer mask here. So. If you want, sometimes it's good to um, organize your layers. I might call this one right because this is the one on the right side. And then double click here and call this one left because it's the left side. And so um, that looks good for what I wanted to get going here. But um, you might not see this here right now. So maybe I'll make this go away. I'll close the timeline for a second. If you want to see the timeline there, you need to go to window and then timeline and that will pop up this little area down here. Now we want to choose is create video timeline. You have one other option in here, frame animation, but we're going to choose create video timeline. And what you can see here is if I pull this panel up is now you can see the seconds going along this bar here. <clears throat> and this is a timeline of our animation. So um, you can adjust the size of these animation bars. I'm going to scroll it down a little bit to the left because I don't need it to be that big. So you can see right now it automatically defaults at five seconds. So five seconds or frames um, is what's got space for right here. Um, what we're gonna do is actually bring these down to four. We only need these to be uh, four seconds. So I'm just kinda gonna bring this in here to four, just clicking and dragging along these edges here bring these all, click and drag them all down to four. Okay, so, oh yeah, I just remembered this one, uh, my other one, I did not convert to a smart object, so I'm gonna do that. Okay, cool, because remember, we can't make them move unless we make them smart objects. So what I need to do now is go ahead and click on the transform option here for this particular right lens. Um, what I will want to do is scroll ahead to one second, and then all I wanna do is with my move tool selected is go ahead and rotate this galaxy one quarter of the way. So I'm gonna stop there, and then I'm going to hit enter or return. And what you'll see is that kinda of creates a little frame box here. Um, so if I were to scroll back and forth, you can see that animation kind of starting. So now if I go ahead to two, I'm again gonna click on this little frame button here is what that it would be, a keyframe, and I'm going to rotate this object again, and then hit enter. 
to keep that transformation. So if I scroll back and forth, I can see that happening. So I'm gonna go ahead to three again, hit this little keyframe button, rotate it again, and then hit enter to keep that transformation. Again, scrolling back and forth shows me that this is working. And then go ahead one more time here. <clears throat> and clicking on this frame button here and rotating it one last time. So, <clears throat> and hitting enter to keep that transformation. So if I were to play this back, you can hit this play button here. It should play it through once. You can set it so that it will loop. Um, where you set your loop is if you click on this gearbox here and you click on the checkbox that says loop playback. So that's what's going to make it just keep looping as you keep playing it. Now I'll go ahead and do the same thing to my other left um, over here. So I'll bring my <clears throat> slider bar back over here, click on this transform uh, option here, and I'm going to go ahead to one second and I'm going to hit the frame button, rotate this galaxy a quarter, click ahead, oh, and hit enter, important part there. Uh, scroll ahead again a little bit more, rotate one more time, and hit enter. And let's just make sure that that works. Yep, and then go ahead a little bit more, Rotate again and hit enter. Scrolling back and forth to check to make sure it's working. And then going one more time. And again, hitting enter to get that going. So if I play this together now, we have both the galaxies spinning in the sunglasses. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit stop. And what we want to look at now is actually just exporting or saving this for the web. So what I'm going to do is go ahead to File, Export, and we want to Save for Web. And in here, there's a couple options that we need to make sure we keep up with in order to make sure that this is a size that's good for the web. Um, so to upload to the internet or send online. So one thing you may notice is you have colors, a number of colors here. If you have 256 colors is probably the default setting. And if I click this, it may take a second for it to change. But let's see, you don't recognize too, too much of a difference here. You can see your GIF size over here. So uh, over a megabyte, is a little high. So I'm gonna keep that down at 128 colors. That brings it down a little bit here. Now this lossy number here, if you put that at, that's probably starting, you probably automatically have it at zero. Um, <clears throat> if we put that up, that will save us a little more space. We wanna get this, oh yeah, see if it's at zero, then that gets really big. So we wanna make sure that this is probably somewhere like around 20. That brings down the size of your overall file a little bit more. Um, the closest we can get this to like seven or 500K is good. Um, so that looks pretty good. We could adjust things like the size. I think the size of this is pretty good. You could turn down the percentage of the size and that will turn that down a little bit and maybe save you a little space. Um, let's see if I put this in at 75. And then um, if I click here, we want to go to our looping options. We want to make that forever. So we do want this to constantly loop is what we want. So we can click preview here to preview it, which should open it up in a browser window. Which may take a second. And there we go. So this is a little preview of what that would look like. Um, I can now go back to Photoshop. We could go ahead and say save. I can give this a name like GIF sunglasses and save it. And that's that. So there you have it. Um, we have a animated and I'll go ahead and um, play this back. We have an animated loop of some spinning galaxies going on somewhere 
where you wouldn't normally look to find galaxies. So I hope you have a lot of luck and success in creating your own animated galaxy spinning GIFs.